welcome everybody to Holy Trinity Twickenham. Now, as you'll see from my rather rudimentary display in front of me, today is our Harvest Festival. I don't know if you'd even noticed that you hadn't gone through Harvest yet, um, but it's Harvest, obviously, with a difference because uh, we don't come with our produce. For several years, we've developed a relationship with the local food bank at the Vineyard uh, in, uh, in Richmond, which is a brilliant, brilliant project. Um, and um, even though it seems not appropriate quite to, to bring... Uh, foodstuffs for them. They have enough, they've said, for uh, the next two months uh, and haven't got the, the space to store it. But I, we know from our experience with them that they struggle to move all the food around and get it to the right place at the right time. And so they've asked us very specifically uh, for a different kind of harvest offering uh, this year. And uh, if you look at the bottom of this video, you'll find that there's a, gi a giving page for them and I know it doesn't feel quite right and it's, it's all a bit cold and clinical, but it's actually what's really, really needed. So after this service, if you would just click on that and give a small donation, uh, that would be really, really wonderful. Now, we have our own uh, problems with cash and, uh, and, uh, and our financial situation here at Holy Trinity. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, John's been talking about the la that the last couple of weeks. But I really believe that it's, uh, it, it is out of our uh, riches that we can give to those who don't have so much. That's the principle of harvest, just saying thank you to God for the riches that we have. And as I was saying to the children uh, last week at Harvest, uh, you know, not many of us have gone hungry in these last seven, uh, seven eight months. Uh, we, we've, done, we've done quite well in many ways, but there are people for whom this has been very serious. So let's try and uh, help the food bank if we can this year. Next, uh, uh, next thing to uh, just uh, say to you is that we, uh, we do run a weekly morning prayer service here on Thursdays at 10 o'clock. I know that doesn't work for, me, for any, any, many, all of you, but for some, uh, that might just be a brilliant way of connecting uh, with each other and with God during the week. So do come on Thursday at 10. And then um, we uh, are preparing for not just harvest, but obviously in a couple of weeks' time, uh, it's Remembrance Sunday on the 8th of November. And again, I don't want that to be unmarked this year. And so um, we will be opening our service at no as normal uh, live at nine o'clock and we'll have a Holy Communion service, but we'll, we'll also have an act of remembrance there. But I also wanted to make this place uh, a place of pilgrimage. Just there is our war memorial. And what we'll do is from uh, nine until half past 11, uh, we'll open up a one-way system. And please bring your family, bring uh, yourself, <laughs> Uh, and any kind of poppy. So we're trying to collect at the moment stones that have been painted uh, with a poppy. Um, but if, you, if you're not that way, uh, you know, you, you're not artistic, uh, then just bring down uh, a plastic poppy or any kind of poppy that you can make um, and put it on our war memorial. Uh, and that will be our, our act of remembrance. It would just be lovely to see that covered in poppies as a sign that we are indeed remembering. And then... Um, we are running and beginning uh, a, a new book club, uh, which uh, Laura and Adam are uh, running. And they're looking at a, a key book, uh, which is called We Need to Talk About Race by Ben Lindsay. Really, really important book at this time in our life. And there's a, an email address on the MailChimp, uh, bookgroup at httchurch.org, bookgroup at httchurch.org. Just ping them an email and uh, then you can get together to discuss this vital book. And obviously we're looking further uh, into, the, into the future, looking towards Christmas as well. Again, it will be strange, but we're doing, we will work very hard, I promise, to make this uh, as amazing a Christmas as it always is. It'll be different, again, but we will make it, uh, make it special for you as an individual and as, as a family. So, uh, but in preparation for that, we've got our fair trade always. Uh, Fleur uh, sells fair, fairly traded products at Christmas time, uh, and uh, uh, certainly in our household, the uh, advent calendar is a favourite. But there's lots of there, lot, that, lots there to look at. And again, if you click on uh, the right link on our, our Mailchimp, you can go in uh, and buy f fairly traded products, which will help both them and us uh, this Christmas time. And so we begin our service by saying together the prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, 
cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we begin our service by worshipping uh, God together in the words of perhaps the most famous harvest hymn. We plough the fields and scatter. Uh, let's sing together. As we come uh, to confession together, we are aware individually, but maybe we've not always been as generous as we might. And we're certainly, uh, as a culture and a community here in Twickenham, uh, we've uh, not always treated uh, creation in the right way, uh, as those in the Western world who, on the, who consume about 90% of the world's resources. And so we say uh, we come in confession and we ask for wisdom uh, for the way to go forward. So we say together. You delight in creation, its colour and diversity, and yet we have misused the earth and plundered its resources for our own selfish ends. You've brought chaos, order out of chaos, light in darkness, good out of evil, but we have preferred darkness in words and deeds which, honor, which dishonour God's holy name. You've showered us with blessings, but we have been grudging towards others and lacking in generosity in word and deed. But because of what Jesus Christ has done for all of us, the world was made through him, and he came to redeem it and us. I can say to all of us, the Lord enrich you with his grace and nourish you with his blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from evil. The Lord accept your prayers and absolve you from 
all your offences for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. We come now uh, and say together the collect for today for harvest, uh, which you'll find on your service sheets. So we say together. Eternal God, you crown the year with your goodness and you give us the fruits of the earth in their season. Grant that we may use them to your glory for the relief of those in need and for our own well-being through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who's alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We come now to our Bible reading, uh, which Sue is going to read to us from Genesis chapter 1. Good morning. Today's reading is taken from Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 to 31. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Then God said, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds in the sky and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw all that he had made. And it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning, the sixth day. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. And here we are in the book of Genesis. It explains in just a few chapters how the human race was brought into existence by the personal activity of God who created the universe. It shows that the first man and woman were the objects of his love and special attention. They were created in his image and were given the privilege of regular communication with him. One man and one woman were appointed not only to procreate, but also as God's stewards. The creation account in the book of Genesis contain in their own symbolic and narrative language profound teachings about human existence. They suggest that human life is grounded in three fundamental and closely interwoven relationships with God and with our neighbour and with the earth itself. We are God's stewards, his custodians, caretakers over the whole creation in which he created. We were all created with the characteristics of mind, emotion, personality and will. We were made creative, imaginative, inventive, artistic, capable of loving and being loved and shaping creation. The shock of the coronavirus pandemic and the terrible suffering it has brought have in a strange way given us opportunities to look anew at our relationship with the earth, with each other and with God. One of the things this pandemic has enc encouraged me to do is to slow down, travel less, walk more, shop less for non-essential items. I've had to have time to stop and pause and reflect I've been much more made aware of the context in which we live, aware of our world and our impact upon it. This can be a time where we can all discover new rhythms of life, ones where we can discover new hope in God who creates so abundantly and who still gives so generously. 
God has cared for the whole world by making it. He cares for it right now by sustaining it. And he's going to care for it by transforming it and renewing it as we see revelation. So our mission, our work as God's people has to include the whole of God's creation and not just other people. We as stewards of creation need to encourage one another to care for God's creation more effectively. We share this world with a wonderful mix of strange, colourful, funny, scary, large, small creatures, more than we could ever imagine. And in Genesis 1, God pauses to look at what he has made and he declares it good, showing the inherent value and worth of God's creation. God loves every aspect of his creation. That's why he created. A few verses earlier, we read where all the sea, sky and land animals are made accordingly to their kinds. But humankind is made instead in the image of God. And it's in this description that we learn what makes us uniquely human. It's the human being that the species chosen by God to bear his image and to be his representative. Being made as God's image bearers gives us a job to do which no other part created order is tasked with. It impacts how we view our relationship with one another as humans and also impacts us our how we view our relationship with the wider creation and other creatures too. We may have this special role as caretakers, gardeners of this world, but this doesn't make us immune to creation suffering, climate change, plastic pollution or poverty. These massive environmental issues, especially climate change, dominates the headlines these days. But from Genesis 1, we've never been meant to see ourselves as separate from nature. If we do, we do more damage with an attitude of not caring through polluting and damaging the world. We must remember we have always been entrusted with the care of this world. So increasingly we're recognising the need for changes of lifestyle, production, consumption in order to combat this warming or at least the human causes which produce and aggravate it. We all need to do our part. Now, we can't do everything at once, but we can try and work out what we need to do. Doing something to look after God's creation is much better than doing absolutely nothing. A few years ago, I travelled to Rwanda, a country that suffered a terrible genocide to which the country is still trying to recover. I visited communities where they had very little and where for many money was hard to come by. Therefore buying food was essential. One of the church projects I visited was to use the land the church owned for a banana plantation. They would give a banana tree to an individual who had the responsibility to look after it, maintain it, water it, nurture it. And the fruit that it produced, they could sell at market to receive an, an income. As soon as the banana tree sprouted new shoots, they were allowed to keep two. Beyond that, they had to dig them up and give them away to someone else that was in need so that they would then take them shoots home and plant them in their own garden. So there was a continuous developing, sustain, sustainable renewing of life 
building up the community, supporting those in need, but also enabling people to provide for themselves. From that very beginning, this role given to us by our Creator has been to be good stewards of our world. We are His and we are accountable to Him. So we must remember that we are stewards and not owners. Creation is good and it is to be cherished and we must be good stewards, not just because we're told to look after creation, but out of love for our neighbours and for the future generations that will follow us. There's also another reason God created us. We learn in Genesis 2 and 3 a most amazing truth. God created human beings so that we will have a unique relationship with our creator and with one another. We were made in his image that we might be capable of relationships and fruitfulness. When God formed you, he placed you. He placed in you all of your necessary giftings, callings and talents you would ever need to fulfill his plan and purpose for your life. He didn't create you for nothing or to fall short or to abort your purpose. Jesus tells us about God's awesome blueprint for our lives. In John 15 verse 16 he says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and I have appointed you that you might go and bear fruit and keep on bearing that your fruit may be lasting so that whenever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. The Lord God Almighty reveals why you were convinced, conceived and for what purpose he set in place that you might go and bear fruit and keep on bearing fruit and that your fruit may be lasting. In Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29 verse 11, God says to us, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. You see, as followers of God, what we say and do has a wider impact on other people around us. They watch us and they listen. As hopefully you're listening to me now and you're not going to sleep. So let's explore the wonders of creation and the glory of God. God's wonders surround us and these marvels reveal much about our creator. Through creation we glimpse his power and wisdom, his majesty and care. So creation is still speaking right now to those who will listen. God's creation is full of absolute wonders greatest wonder of all is his redeeming love. In a time when our lives are disturbed and everything has changed, we need faith and prayer more than ever. The great theologian Karl Barth says to clasp your hands in prayer is the beginning of an uprising against the disorder of the world. So let us do that now and let us pray. Lord, be praised for the immensity and the beauty of your creation. We thank you for this calling to take care of our planet that you put in our heart. 
we ask you the grace of being able to see the world with your eyes and to always be amazed by the places that we are blessed to go. Pour out upon us the power of your love that we may be good stewards of your creation. When I say, Lord, in your mercy, please respond, hear our prayer. We bring our prayers to you today, Lord, reaching out to you in these disoriented times of life in the time of COVID. It was you who made this beautiful and mysterious and sometimes terrifying world. And it's you who understand its complexity much better than we do. The delicate balance between joy and suffering, light and dark, relief and fear. We pray for our church. Please be with Tim, who is fully stretched in his leadership roles, both as area dean and as vicar of Holy Trinity Twickenham. We give you thanks for the support he gets from Nat, from our newly priested Cara, Anna and the PCC. Together they face the challenges of adapting the church to our unpredictable social environment ensuring that it continues to serve as a place of comfort and encouragement as each of us faces the practical and emotional demands thrown up by each day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our leaders and scientists as they face the ongoing challenge of developing a response to the pandemic. Sometimes their views seem very polarized in the struggle to convert science into actionable policy in a world where people are often divided about our rights to pursue our own interests versus our responsibilities to protect and care for each other. Give our leaders the wisdom and the intelligence to come up with creative plans that safeguard the health of communities whilst minimising loss of livelihoods. Grant them the confidence to see dialogue as a route to mutual understanding rather than a macho contest where one is right and the other is wrong. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Be with those who are unwell, dear Lord, those battling with COVID and with long, long COVID, as well as those with cancer and other unrelated illnesses, whose screening or appointments or operations have been cancelled in the immense pressures on the health service, which is strained to breaking point. Be with all those courageous men and women working in the health and social care sectors to look after the sick and vulnerable and to keep the rest of us well. We give thanks for those who risk their health day by day to ensure the provision of essential services, such as food and transport, and the education and support of children and young people. We ask you to be with those who live in situations of war and conflict, who have lost their homes, those who suffer unfair discrimination, or who live in poverty without access to many of the things we take for granted. Please also be with those who are lonely, those who are bereaved, and those in mental distress, and guard and guide those in difficult relationships. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Be with each of us in the week ahead, dear Lord, as we swim through a sea of anxieties and fears for ourselves, our families and our economic futures. Please never let us forget the peace that comes from knowing and trusting that you are with us. Keep your comforting arms around us in our darkest moments. Give us the confidence to face each new day as a new beginning. May we wake up each morning with the serenity of knowing that no matter what happens, good or bad, you are always with us. Help us to believe in ourselves the way you believe in us. May we never fail to be startled by the beauty of the red autumn leaves or the tranquility of the river. Guide us to rise to the occasion when things are difficult 
facing our challenges with grace and encouragement. May we forgive ourselves when we slip up and strive to be the best that we can be to ourselves, to each other, and to this beautiful and fragile world you've made for us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us into one body through the cross. We worship in his name. And we share his peace with all our brothers and sisters. So let's uh, share a quick sign of peace with those around us, those that we love, those that maybe we need to get back into peace with, in relationship with. Uh, and in a moment, uh, we'll come back for our communion. So we come now to the Lord's Supper, Holy Communion, the Eucharist, the great thanksgiving. I mean, Jesus left us a meal to remember him by. A meal, a family meal where we celebrate, strangely, his broken body, his poured out blood, and yet we know that it wins us a great victory. He did it for us. So we say together, the Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. And on the night that he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and he gave it to them, saying, take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. And so as we proclaim his death, we celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit on us, that for us we may receive bread and wine, receive his body and blood, even by his Spirit. And so as we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. And so with your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise, and we lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, 
Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And so let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. We say together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so now, in a moment of quiet, draw near with faith. Receive of the Lord Jesus Christ, Eat and, eating, drinking, remembering that he died for you and feeding on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Well, our final hymn reminds us that not only do we give thanks to God for his amazing creation, which we enjoy uh, just the fruits of so much when often just forgetting the maker himself, but to move us on from that thanksgiving also now to a place where we realise that uh, just thanking God for that is not life in itself. It is to come to Christ. That's greater than anything else, knowing him is even more wonderful than knowing God in creation. So we sing together, All I Once Held Dear. And uh, it's great that uh, uh, this was recorded for us when uh, people could meet inside in those happy days of a few days ago when you could actually meet inside. But a great thanks to Katie uh, and to Beth and to Ellie.
And so, as we close, a final prayer together. Let's pray. So may God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is the source of all goodness and growth, pour his blessing upon all things created and upon you, his children, that you may use his gifts to the glory and welfare of all peoples. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us now and always. Amen.